Exciting new research has just emerged, putting our understanding of running injuries into question. Starting with this paper, which addresses the narrative that running is bad for your knees. And maybe running is bad for your knees because they found runners have a thinning of knee cartilage immediately after running. I wanted to get to the bottom of this, so I tracked down the lead author for an explanation. Yes, you will see some changes to your cartilage, but later in the day, the cartilage went back to what it looked like before. Okay, so the thinning of cartilage is only a short-term thing, but after chatting more, I learned this thinning is actually beneficial. When you compress the cartilage, it acts like a sponge and the fluid inside the cartilage rushes out. When it comes back in, it actually brings all the nutrients with it. So that's how the cartilage gets fed. So in other words, if you are trying to protect your knees with non-weight bearing activities, you are in reality depriving your cartilage of essential nutrients, which might explain why we see the occurrence of osteoarthritis three times higher in the sedentary population compared to recreational runners. And if you're worried because your doctor has identified knee wear and tear on MRI scans, you need to see this paper, which MRI'd a bunch of knees and found structural damage in 97%. Sounds like a lot, but that's not even the interesting part because all these knees that were scanned were within the healthy population. That means no history of knee pain. In other words, incidental findings are very real and very common. So we as runners need to be very careful with how we navigate these narratives when faced with an injury such as knee pain. In fact, the same story can be said for lower back pain in runners, because this paper released last week shows a similar thinning when running, this time to the discs of the spine. But again, disc height recovers shortly after, and this process may have a mild positive effect in the long term. But what about if you have a health professional that has told you that you have one leg longer than the other, or some sort of leg and pelvis imbalance? Surely that would increase your risk of injury. Well, this paper released a few weeks ago measured the leg length of over 800 runners and also measured imbalances in step length, contact time, ground reaction forces, and they found no correlation with asymmetry and injury. These findings may sound surprising until you learn that 90% of the population have some sort of leg length discrepancy, typically between one and five millimeters, which isn't enough to alter biomechanics. In fact, if you want to alter biomechanics, you need a 20 millimeter difference, which is within 1% of the population. And while slight imbalances may lead to small amounts of uneven loading while you're running, your body will do an incredible job at adapting to these imperfections, provided that you progress your training in a sensible manner. And I say this because spikes in training load has one of the biggest correlations with injury. In fact, this paper released a few weeks ago found that exact link. But surprisingly, the training load linked to injury wasn't the spike in weekly mileage all of us runners follow. It was actually something else. If you're interested in what that was, I interviewed the lead author to explain, and you can learn all about it in this video right here.